and welcome to day three of the grand 1500 mile adventure. <laughs> Today, I am truly exhausted and worn out. Nothing bad happened, no disasters, but it was basically, I have to say, sort of a terrifying drive. I mean, I was terrified, I guess, but I was stressed. It was for the first two and a half hours, it was torrential rain and wind and the rain to the point where, and I don't usually see this on the freeways. I've traveled I-5, but big puddles of water on the freeway, which just majorly magnified the spray from the big trucks and the wind. Basically, I felt like I was driving blind and I was terrified for Norma Jean. I mean, it was like, and the winds making me do this. And I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> Thankfully, there is no crazy drivers, but I mean, it was so bad going through Portland that I was tempted to take the first rest stop and say, that's it, I can't drive in this. But I couldn't. It's like, if you do that, you're never going to get to Arizona. You have to keep going. So I kept going for two and a half hours. And at that point, I was going to guaranteed take the next rest stop because I could not take the torrential rains and the wind anymore. And my hands were cramping. I realized I was gripping the steering wheel so hard that my hands were cramping. My fingers were sore. And they have arthritis anyway, but this sort of like inflamed it and then I realized I had a major kink in the side of my neck and my jaw hurt and I was like oh my god I've been clenching my teeth this whole time so it was like no it's time for me to pull over for the night but then the rain started to clear up and I was like woohoo you know and it was like I couldn't stop it wasn't raining so I just kept going and just practice, you know, keeping my jaw loose and working my hands and relaxing more into a normal drive. Other than I was going through flatlands and there were these major, you'd be driving and then I'd see ahead the, the tree branches and I go, okay, here we go. And then, yep, sure enough, man, it's just rocked the bus. I did not expect that. Um, I don't know why. I just thought the bus is big and heavy and and she wouldn't do that, but not so. But I kept going. I went beyond the point that I had said I was going to stop. And basically I think this trip, all I'm rest areas because I just want to get off and get on. And today I just wanted to get out of the out of Oregon. I wanted to get into California not thinking about what I'm going to have to go through to get into California. So anyway, you know, I was very thankful. <laughs> I am 87 miles north of Grants Pass. So I think, I, you know, I went like somewhere between 165 and 200 miles. I didn't clock it. Maybe I can research it and do it then, but I drove for four and a half hours. And it was stressful half of that. So I was just exhausted. And that's when I knew when the last rest stop I passed, I go, I know it's not raining, but I've got to pull over. I'm just, I'm, I'm done. And you got to be alert when you're driving. So I pulled off into this little rest stop. And did I, I'm really tired. Did I say I'm 87 miles north of Grants Pass? Anyway. Now... Luckily, Betty's brother, who lives in Grants Pass, has invited me to stop there. And he said, because one thing I am worried about snow over the pass, and I've already heard from someone that it's snowing at Shasta. And I have to go through those places. 
And if you want to know the truth, oh my God, that just, that just cranks my insides with anxiety. It's like, I do not want to drive in the snow. I mean, I'm, I'm, but that's the only way down. And it's the least, you know? All the other passes were already bad, and the, and the snow plows weren't even being able to keep them maintained. So, I am tomorrow morning. I am just going 87 miles south to Grants Pass to Betty's brother's place, and he said I can stay there as long as I need to. He said, and what we can do is we can monitor the road conditions that I'm heading into. He says, cause sometimes right after it snows or during the snow, the roads aren't clear, but then afterwards they're clear. And even though it's snow on the ground, the roads are clear. So that untwisted my guts a little bit. It's like, okay, so I have a place to go and stay <laughs> and rest. <laughs> And, uh, and that's, it's like, I'm recording this video, but I'm not going to edit it like I did last time. So I'm going to go to Grants Pass and shoot another video, maybe edit two, let you know what's going on. But this one will be a day lag instead of this being posted tomorrow. It's, you know, anyway, it might be the next day instead. Let's see. We're at a, this isn't as nice a rest stop as the last one. It's a uh, little, and the only place for semis and big rigs is the length of the rest stop. We park along the side of the curb, and then over here is where the cars are and the restrooms and stuff. And it's not very big. I it's, but. <laughs> Yay, I made it further than I thought I was going to make it. And yay, the rain stopped after two and a half hours, so I could make it this far. And yay, I have Betty's brother to go stay at. And oh, and I didn't know this, I haven't met them. But when Betty lived close to where my parents lived, and I didn't live there close, my parents knew Betty's brother and his wife. So they know Norma and Ken. So um, it'll be fun talking to them. And he said, I can recharge everything and do whatever I need. And I'll tell you what I need. <laughs> okay, this is the funny part of the journey. And this is the part that made me laugh. Okay, when I first took off, I realized that, you know, the rain just piles in the leak somewhere up there. And then when I move the bus, it all pours out. Well, this morning, before I left and I knew, I mean, it had been raining hard. So I knew there was a bunch waiting to pour down on me. So I set my phone up on the dash so it could catch the action when it happened. And I had a bowl ready to catch much of it with, and I had extra towels. So I was ready for it. So I get in and as I'm pulling out of the rest stop, I go ahead and stop, maybe give it a little jiggle, nothing. Drive a little more, gave it a stop, nothing. So I thought, oh, cool. Thanks, Norma Jean. Took care of that leak for me, huh? <laughs> and then halfway on, to, on the freeway on-ramp, I was like halfway on, and suddenly it dumped on me and not just in the one place it did, it found another place to come out. So I had these two streams pouring down on me, soaking the one towel that was in my lap, because I always drive with a towel in my lap now, and my pants again. And I pulled over on the shoulder, you know, and grabbed the, some extra towels and got it, waited until it was done leaking, dried it up, and put a fresh towel on my lap and we took off. I'm telling you, man, that leak is outsmarting me. I think I got it licked and it says, oh no, I'm gonna do it different this time. <laughs> anyway, so needless to say, I didn't get it filmed. I was all excited to at least show you something fun. 
but <laughs> and it's this travel video is not like I'm stopping and seeing things or even stopping to eat man it, today it was like all I'm seeing is the road and cars and paying attention to everything I don't even see the scenery and I love the part of Oregon that I pass through I usually really enjoy that scenery didn't see it today <laughs> I'm but really scared about traveling in snow. And it is a comfort to know that I have somewhere that I can sit. And he says, it doesn't matter, you know, he says, hey, if you have to sit, you know, multiple days to wait for the roads to clear, then so be it. And that just makes me feel so much more secure. I don't want to be forced into it. And it was a long day for these guys, even her. Check it out, man. You never see her like this. <laughs> even half the time at night, if I wake up in the night, I look. She's not sleeping. He's snoring. And she's looking out the window, has her head under the curtain, and is standing guard. Speaking of which, they're doing much better. Actually, tonight we were outside, and somebody else got outside with their dog. And I said, no barking. I just, when they, they both just looked and I said, no barking. And neither one of them barked. And that dog was doing its business a ways off. And we were up here doing our business and they didn't bark. I was freaking out on them. Like, what good dogs? Good, no barking. Let's go get a treat. Good dog. Oh. <laughs> okay, now I owe her one. And you get one by default, RJ. And they're doing much better about people walking by. And again, if I can catch them, when, when I can catch them when they first do the alert, and I say no barking, good no barking, and the second they're not barking, they get the good. And that's been keeping her from barking. The only time they do a bark is if I didn't see them alert and I didn't say it before they started. But now, it used to be, but now they she is stopping on, like, when she does her first bark, I say no barking and she looks at me, I go, good, no barking, and that's the only bark that gets out. And. RJ's been trained to the watch command, and he, so he's allowed to go, rrr, 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 and look, he's just not supposed to bark. And he settled back into that. For a while, he was barking with her, but uh, he settled back in. He's not barking at passerbyers. But today was Banner that they didn't bark at the dog. And so that's day three. Made it through day three. I think, yeah, I already told you about the miles. I'm tired, and I'm, I don't know. I probably won't edit this. I'll just put it out. Just pretend we're live. <laughs> Thanks for following me on the journey, guys. Thank you so much, and stay tuned for day four. Well, yeah, because you're watching this now. <laughs> I was going to say stay tuned for three and four because I haven't published this one anyway. You can tell I'm tired. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. And oh, I wanted to say a special. I have quite, quite a few of you viewers out there that are praying for me. And I just want to say thank you. Keep those prayers coming because I really do need them. <laughs> anyway, I actually do love you guys. And we'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you. You tomorrow, you might not see me tomorrow. Okay, see, I am dingy. I've got to go to bed, but we have to go for one more walk first. Good night.